What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield, the VGC 2021 video. Players Cup 3 qualifiers have just ended about the time that I'm uploading this video. Uh, my overall rating I'll throw up on screen, I actually hit a rating of 1666, which is identical to what I qualified with last time uh, with Thievil, because I, I, I tend to have like a project Pokemon, I'll, I'll use a particular Pokemon uh, that I really like in a team, and it's not usually the most orthodox thing, but it, I always end up doing pretty well with it, so I'm very proud of that team, and I'm also extremely proud of this team, but before we get into that, do me a favor guys, if you enjoy this video at any point in time, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I bring you guys daily Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC content. Today I'll be sharing with you guys the team that I brought to Players Cup 3, the Golisopod team that I've hyped up quite a bit. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, also, answer the comment question of the day. What Pokemon would you want to add to your team if you were to have another shot at qualifying? What would you change about your team? Just let me know. So, what is this team? Golisopod is such a strange Pokemon. I have made a video about why I think it needs to be buffed. Uh, however, I, I think that it does have some usage outside of, you know, not needing emergency exit. Like you could you could make a case for emergency exit and I tried to actually use it to my advantage on this team. My general idea when it comes to team building is if I'm going to use a Pokemon that is unorthodox and usually not really viable, I'll try to make sure that when I add it onto a team, it's not actually just something that's objectively worse than an alternative. And I managed to do that with Golispot here, and I'll explain how this thing outclasses Urshifu Rapid Strikes in certain situations. So yeah. So, this team consists of Golisopod, Colossal G-Max, Venusaur G-Max, Landorus Therian, Glacier, and Dusclops. Uh, Golisopod I'll start off with right now. So, Golisopod I'm running Wide Guard, First Impression, Aqua Jet, and Liquidation with Safety Goggles, Max HP, 60 Attack, 36 Defense, and 156 special defense with four speed left over because I decided to go with the minimum speed nature and zero IV. So I can't actually use the, la the last four. Like I could put them into special attack, but they're not doing anything anyways. So uh, with 75 HP and 140 defense, Glyspot's already like really, really physically defensive. Uh, and 90 special defense isn't bad either. So what I wanted to do here is I wanted to make sure that Glycopod would be like a support option for the team that. Um, was able to help out Colossal in ways that something like Urshifu or um, other activators, like occasionally you'll see like Primarina, occasionally you'll see Dragapult. Uh, I wanted it to help him out in ways that those Pokemon couldn't, and I actually found a way to make it work. So with Safety Goggles, it makes it so my Aqua Jet can't be redirected into any other Pokemon using uh, Rage Powder, and it also makes me immune to things like Sleep Powder from opposing Venusaur, etc. Uh, the basic spread here is with this much defense, I think, I can't remember, I believe the defense investment allows me to take minus one max airstream from like Jolly Landorus, which is really huge just because it's Jolly Landorus. Um, either that or I took less than, I, I took like less than 50% from most rock slides in the game, which is really cool because if you end up <laughs> with Goliath Spot, if you drop below 50%, that's a really big deal since you get switched out, you don't get to use your turn. So being able to minimize those situations is really big. You might be wondering why sassy nature with this much special defense? Well, this is actually a really fun spread. This Golisopod is able to take a timid max special attack Electroweb from Regieleki and only have 49% of its health be taken out maximum. So you're going to be always safe from emergency exiting against Regieleki, which is really, really important. Uh, I'm running Wide Guard because it's actually really useful in the format. Previous to this series, it wasn't often you would see something like uh, Muddy Water or uh, Earthquake when you had other options like Scald or um, High Horsepower or something. But with Landorus and Tapu Fini being so popular, Wide Guard actually has a reason to be run right now. And by running Wide Guard on this team, when they've already wasted their Dynamax, or I don't believe they're going to go for a Dynamax, Golispod's actually able to protect the Colossal next to it with Wide Guard from Earthquakes, from Muddy Waters, and there are so many situations where that actually came in clutch. I was actually able to click Wide Guard and survive a turn. Even like under Trick Room, like this team has a Glacier on it. Golisopod and Glacier are really cool next to each other because I ended up facing a Trick Room team with Torkoal on it, and in the end game, I was like, oh no, Torkoal underspeeds my Glacier, what am I gonna do? And then it hit me, Torkoal's the slowest thing in the field. 
if it has eruption or heat wave, it's just going to click it. It doesn't need a Dynamax or anything. So I made the right call. I went for wide guard and I was able to click max. Um, I was able to click uh, max quake into the Torkoal and end up winning the match. So that was really cool. Another thing that Golisopod does that people don't realize is being bug and water type means that Golisopod can wall to pretty much no end both Glacier and Metagross. Metagross like does zero damage to it. Think about the moves that Metagross runs. On occasion it will run max rockfall, but this Golisopod actually lived plus two max rockfall from a Metagross, so even that didn't actually matter in the end. So uh, what they typically run is max hailstorm, max quake, max steel spike, and protect. So iron head, ice punch, Stommy Tantrum Protect. That's like the typical set. All of those things are resisted by Golisopod, and because this thing's so physically defensive, it takes like 20% maximum from those. I think Max Hailstorm and Max Steel Spike do around 25% maximum, so it's really easy to wall those things, and if you you can like KO everything around the Metagross and just keep Golisopod around, and you'll end up 1v1-ing it in the end, which happened a few times too. Next on the team, the most important piece of the team, to be honest, is the Colossal. It's running a... Weakness policy with Steam Engine, the typical set. Uh, Meteor Beam, Protect, Heat Wave, Solar Beam. I just put enough speed, I believe, to outspeed Regieleki or something like that, like Tim and Regieleki. And I know for a fact I outspeed Venusaur in the Sun, so that's important. We have Meteor Beam, Protect, Heat Wave, Solar Beam. The thing about Colossal is that it can simultaneously be the most fast thing in the field. It can be the fastest thing in the field just by clicking Aqua Jet but it can also be the slowest thing in the field by clicking a different move. I have actually Bulldoze on this team, which is really cool. There were a couple of situations where I let off with Golisopod and Colossal, and they had a very obvious Trick Room play in mind. So rather than just Dynamaxing the Colossal and, you know, wasting <laughs> the opportunity by giving my... Oh, I have a new follower on Twitch. Thank you. I'll turn off that uh, alert box. Okay, we shouldn't be interrupted anymore. Rather than like just take that opportunity to Aqua Jet myself, what I would actually do is click Meteor Beam into the Porygon or whatever wasn't really a threat on the field, uh, and I would get a free plus one, and I would take that turn to switch in the Dusclops. And after that, what I could actually do is, now that Trick Room was up, because usually they would go for Trick Room against my Glycopod Colossal lead, I would click Bulldoze with the Dusclops, lowering the speed of my Colossal, still giving me myself uh, my, the weakness policy, and clicking plus three Meteor Beam into whatever was on the field. And I would get a free KO that way. And then rather than being like the fast Colossal that sweeps through whole teams, I was actually a very slow Colossal that was able to sweep through teams because I just took the first turn to give myself plus three. It was really cool and I was able to pull that off a few times. And then I'd be able to spam my Max Vocalith and Max Vocalith is such a huge part of this team. Uh, it allows you to just get consistent chip damage on everything in the field and it's really important. That's, that's all I can say. Uh, Heat Wave is great for activating Venusaur. And basically, something that you can do with this team is you can lead off with Colossal and Glycopod, activate your Steam Engine, go for Max Flare instead of Max um, Vocalith immediately. If you anticipate them knocking out your Glycopod or bringing it below 50% health, and because of Emergency Exit, you would activate the Emergency Exit, get in the Venusaur for free pretty much. It's like a U-turn and you would go for Max Flare on that same turn, allowing your Venusaur to have Chlorophyll, and then you could spam Sleep Powder, Sludge Bomb, whatever you needed. It was really cool, and once again, it came in clutch a couple of games. Uh, Solar Beam, if you're wondering why that's on there, I didn't really see a need for Max Quake. I already had two Pokemon capable of providing ground coverage on the team, so I ended up swapping it out for Solar Beam because there were a lot of situations where I'd be facing down a Rotom Wash, and I wanted to be able to one-shot it and not just roll the dice on whether or not it hit its Hydro Pump, so Swapped it out for Solar Beam versus Tapu Fini. It was a one shot on non Dynamax Tapu Fini. And against Dynamax Tapu Fini, I would usually just go for Max Flare and get in the Venusaur and then just, you know, go for Sludge Bomb. And then I would go for the uh, Max Overgrowth. So that's that's really nice. Uh, Venusaur. Uh, it's Focus Sash Chlorophyll. It is G Max just for the sake of on occasion I have to lead off Venusaur and it's not fun. There were a couple of things that Venusaur came in handy with in terms of matchups. Venusaur was really, really important for when I was facing Rain in particular, and actually it was a really important tool to my game plan against uh, Regigigas Weezing. So, first of all, versus Rain, what you would do is you would lead off Venusaur Dusclops, and you give them sort of an ultimatum there. When it's Kingdra and Politoed, the only way they can one-shot Dusclops is A, with a crit Max Geyser in the Rain, or Helping Hand in their Max Geyser. So, 
By leading off Venusaur Dusclops, you gave him an ultimatum. Either I put your Kingdra to sleep, or I get my Trick Room up. And then from there, one of one of one or the other would happen, and then you would just get in Glacier for free, because one of these would drop, and you could just spam Max Hailstorm, Max Quake, and Rain is very free with this team if you manage to pull that off correctly. Granted, you have to land the Sleep Powder most of the time, but there are some situations where you just get the Trick Room up for free, so that's always fun. Um, versus Regigigas Weezing, it's a similar game plan, uh, except you have to make a call. You have to make a call and lead. You either put the... You, you lead off the same way. You would lead off Dusclops Venusaur, and you try to go for the Trick Room, but you also try to Sleep Powder something. Taunt is always going to come out from Weezing, so what you can do is you can go for the Sleep Powder onto the Weezing slot, not the Regigigas, and they're going to go for a Max Strike on your Venusaur. Usually, unless they're running a ton of speed on the Weezing, you're going to outspeed it even though you're at minus one. So you can actually just stay in Sleep Powder and uh, get your Trick Room off. Or alternatively, if you want to make a call, you can just go ahead and Sleep Powder into the Regigigas and hope that they're not going for Taunt. Maybe they'll Taunt your Venusaur or something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but that did happen once, so... Then you would just get in Glacier, Dynamax, Max Quake the Weezing first, make sure you get rid of that thing since it's either asleep or likely wants to burn you. Uh, you can usually get that for free. Uh, yeah, Dusclops, Glacier, Venusaur, and Colossal was usually what I brought to that matchup, so that was really cool. Uh, we have an Assault Vest Lander Therian, and Lander Therian was kind of MVP for the Spectrier and Clefairy matchup. Versus that, funny enough, you would actually lead off Glycopod Landorus, and why you would do that is because you want to open up an opportunity uh, for Trick Room in the back, pretty much. Or you could bring Colossal, depending on the matchup, but usually they would just Dynamax Spectre on lead and try to knock out the Landorus. Because we are so absurdly bulky, I have enough speed, so um, at plus one, I'm out, I'm out speeding Dragapult. What you would do is turn one, you would go for a Liquidation into the Spectrier and a Max Airstream into the Spectrier. And if they follow me, uh, you're just going to knock out the Clefairy pretty much every single time. And if they go for a Helping Hand, you're going to survive with your Landers, and you're going to actually end up outspeeding the Spectrier on the following turn. From then on out, uh, you're able to spam Max Quake to boost the special defense of your Golisopod and your Landorus, and you end up just kind of winning the War of Attrition as long as there are no crits. There's really not much more to that game plan. Uh, usually you'd bring Dusclops and Golisopod in the back, or or not Golisopod, or Colossal in the back, or you would bring Dusclops Glacier in the back. One or the other would be really helpful depending on the matchup. Next up we have Glacier, just a standard Life Orb set. This team really needed a way to beat Garchomp reliably, and this was one of my best options. On top of that, it needed a second Trick Room Pokemon, and I think Glacier is really, really good right now. Uh, Picolytics can tell you that pretty much, but uh, just by running Life Orb, I was able to pick up a lot of KOs. Close Combat is really clutch for KOing things like Rotom Wash under Trick Room. That happened once. Uh, I, there's, I believe I uploaded it yesterday in a highlight. I ended up getting a Close Combat KO on Rotom Wash, which secured me the win, which is really nice. Uh, yeah, th there's really not much beyond that with Glacier. It's just going to take lives under Trick Room, and it shows up to most matches. The usual suspects, as I call them for this team, are Glycopod Colossal on lead, Glacier Dusclops in the back. But there are some fringe situations where, yes, you want to bring the Landers, yes, you want to bring the Venusaur. But most of the time, it's just these two and these two, and it's super solid, man. Last Pokemon is Dusclops. Frisk is amazing on lead. However, I don't usually lead off with it because being able to choose fast mode or slow mode on a whim is really really important for using this team it was just max max because i want to make sure if i'm facing choice band urshifu i have a role to live uh bulldoze to activate weakness policy and slow down my colossal if need be was really cool nightshade is standard will-o-wisp is, is standard trick room is standard not much beyond that but yeah uh that's the team if you guys want to try it out i will leave a code up on screen for you guys this is one of my favorite teams i've ever made and i'm really happy i got to use Golisopod. Chances of me qualifying are pretty high, but I'm not sure right now. So yeah, with that, uh, do me a favor. If you enjoyed this video at any point in time, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.